we're trying to understand what is the, the beginnings of the disease process in the most common form of dementia. Dementia occurs prominently with Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease. Alzheimer's is the most prominent dementia. Um, more and more people are getting it. And uh, it seems to be an attack on synapses, which are where nerve cells communicate with each other. These are also probably the most complex uh, things we know uh, in the brain and in our body, if not uh, the world. Uh, it it's allows us to think and remember. And that's where Alzheimer's is becoming abnormal. And we want to understand how, why, for one reason, and that's if we understand it better, I think that's the way to come up with better therapies. A challenge for dementia is we have no real therapy. We have some that help just a little. They do not stop the disease process. We want to be like other diseases like heart disease and where you can have a dramatic effect. We don't have that yet in neurodegenerative diseases. In my lab we try to understand what is going wrong at the synapses and we work on a small peptide that aggregates abnormally called beta amyloid. In Parkinson's alpha-synuclein aggregates. In fact both of these aggregate in Alzheimer's. There are links between Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. And we want to understand what is going wrong in the beginning so we could change that. I mean, major challenges in, in accomplishing what we want to do is to come up with better therapies for these degenerative diseases of the brain with aging is that we're working on very small structures, the synapses in the brain they're not completely understood. We know aspects, but we need help with technologies, with experts in other areas. So we want and we need to stay, the, having cutting edge technologies is not just a luxury because we can get pretty pictures. It allows us to advance our research better. And uh, a challenge is that we're working on these tiny structures. We need to model a human disease and we need all the, the, the best technologies that we can get. And uh, we need interactions where we can get help in areas we don't know as well. For me, when I think of, of breakthrough, I think of one day where I sort of looked through a microscope and saw something totally different in terms of Alzheimer's disease. And this is really an example of translational research where I was working in a more uh, even preclinical basic laboratory and new antibodies had developed. And I then, having had a background in looking at human brain, took those antibodies and, and looked at human brain and saw a, a, that this beta amyloid that is so linked with Alzheimer's, that this actually accumulated inside nerve cells. Uh, when you look at patients who die of Alzheimer's, you see the amyloid as these aggregates outside nerve cells. And it, if it was a skin disease, it would be lesions on you. You see them under a microscope in the brain. But if you look beforehand, and there are examples where certain people will get uh, Alzheimer's, and we had these new antibodies, and boom, it changed my thinking of this disease, and it has changed our focus, and it has been really the most important breakthrough for me, but there have been more since then, actually more important ones, but for me that was a a big experience. Short-term goals tend to be a challenge. You want to do something bigger than short-term. <laughs> the short-term should be to have a therapy for Alzheimer's. The challenge with that is doesn't seem to, to be that short-term. It takes time, it takes work, and so the short-term goals for us is to know a little bit more about what this peptide that abnormally accumulates in Alzheimer's, it's beta amyloid, what is it doing wrong at synapses? What is it doing normally there? It's actually we make this peptide that globs up in the brain with Alzheimer's normally when we think. We actually generate it, but we don't know why. So we're working on what its normal function might be and ultimately, more importantly, what its abnormal role at synapses is. I mean, the long-term goals are clear. The only reason we do our research is to have some better therapy
for patients who have dementia. We have more and more people around the world with dementia. We're doing so much better with other diseases, so we are treating heart diseases and cancers better and better. Unfortunately, you don't just have nothing, you eventually develop neurodegenerative diseases, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease, and we need better therapies for that. Uh, the driving force for research is to having, have seen, seeing patients with these diseases and uh, to see how they devastate lives, they devastate families, um, the emotional toll, toll these uh, diseases take, the frustration of patients who have them, who ask, is there something you can give to, to, to stop this? and the frustration of saying we just don't have anything yet, we need to do more research. And uh, that's the, the biggest driving force.